Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Sunday school class again. We are continuing with the seven arrows. Looking forward to next Sunday where we will get to be together on May 17th for worship. Hope you will definitely join us for that. Um, have not completely made a decision about when we will start meeting in person for Sunday school again, but we will keep you updated. But for today, looking forward to um, another day with the seven arrows. We are completed with arrow six and we are moving on to arrow seven. Um, let's get this PowerPoint started. Here we go. A um, couple of announcements. Um, this Wednesday night, we will be premiering another testimony interview. Man, these have been interviews that I thoroughly enjoyed. I'm looking forward to this Wednesday night releasing Erica Hughes' um, interview that, that we did together. Um, just hearing her heart for God and, and how God um, entered her life and, and enriched her life and now is using her life to just bless so many other people. Um, and Sunday, we're starting something new since we are getting closer and closer to meeting together. Um, we're going to start showing two of the interviews a week instead of one. So this Sunday night, we will be showing another testimony interview. Um, that young man that you see there is named Joey Carlisle. He just graduated from Clarendon Hall School down in Somerton, South Carolina, and he will be heading to Anderson University this fall. And there is a really good chance, a very good chance, that he will be coming to worship with us here at Honey of Half First Baptist um, because he's my nephew, and I am going to use all my family influence to, to bring him here to to celebrate the Lord with us here at First Baptist Honey of Path. But I got to interview him, and what a blessing to get to, to interview my nephew and, and hear his love for Christ, because as a youth pastor, I have recognized that it is a rare and precious thing um, for someone to be sold out to Christ and to put Christ as the most important thing in their life with all of these worldly things calling out to them and, and pursuing them and, and trying to get their full attention on the things of this world instead of the things of God. And to, to see who Joey has grown to be and his love for God is fantastic. Wednesday night, we will still be doing online Zoom. Um, do, I do not have a date on our first Wednesday night together. Oh my word, I can't wait. Till our first Wednesday night together. Um, it's going to be so awesome, but Zoom has been really fun. If you have not been tuning in on Zoom, you have been missing some good stuff. Um, for about 10 minutes, we chat and, and arrive, and then at 640, we begin the Kahoot Trivia Challenge, and this has been some ferocious competition, a little bit of smack talking going on, a little bit of rivalries going on. Um, some people are saying, I don't care if I win, just as long as I beat this particular person. So um, we'll work hard to keep those robberies sweet, but it's good to see a little competition. And for tuning into Sunday School, you will get to be one of the first <clears throat> to see what this week's categories are. First one, of course, is Sunday School questions. So anything we cover on this video is fair game for the trivia challenge. Um, chapstick trivia. Um, not sure what that's going to look like, but but get brushed up on your chapstick knowledge. Um, 80s music. Um, looking forward to that. Um, that that's, that's, my, that's my music right there, about when we had real music, and that was only in the 80s, not before, not after, just in the 80s. But looking forward to to asking some of those questions. TV shows, it was pretty broad topic. Um, and again, these are, these are topics that, that last week's contestants came up with. 
and this one is going to be really fun. Um, Jamie Facts. Um, I will be asking questions about me and I will be doing my best to ask questions that maybe not even Joy knows. So um, tune in to, to find out some of the answers to those questions that you may or may not be able to hold against me in the future. So let's go ahead and get started with seven arrows. <clears throat> Quick review like we always do. Hour number one, when you're reading the Bible, just simply ask, what does the scriptures say at face value? Um, using just grammatical rules, um, looking at um, the subject, verbs, all that stuff, what does it say at face value? And then hour number two takes a little research. What does this passage mean to the original audience, studying culture, studying history, um, studying you know, maybe even geography and maps, you know, when, when it begins to give descriptions and details, what would that have meant to the original audience? Hour number three, what does this passage tell us about God? This is a very important hour because Ephesians 5 commands us to be imitators of God. So the more we study who God is, the more we learn his heart, his values, the more we can imitate him and display him as accurately as we possibly can to a world wanting to know about his goodness and about his grace. Hour number four, what does the passage tell us about people? This is really important to, to help us relate to people, communicate to people. It can create compassion. It can create urgency. It can create um, an awareness of how much we truly need the gospel. Um, as we learn about people, we learn about the importance of ministry as well. Um, number five gets personal. What does this passage demand of me? So when you read the scripture, you're not thinking, oh yeah, I know who needs to hear that. You're thinking, um, wow, how can this change the way that I do life? And then hour number six, how does this passage change the way that I relate to people? We dealt with that the last three weeks. Um, specifically, we asked, how does this passage change the way that I deal with my family? How does it change the way that I deal with my church? And how does it deal with the way I treat people outside of the church? And this week, we are going to look specifically at hour number seven. Um, we're wrapping this up. We're about done with this book. It has been a fantastic book. And there is a copy of this book for every teenager down in the basement. So make sure to get yours and take it home and read it on your own. Um, this is something you need to be familiar with so that you can stand on your own and not be dependent on somebody else to tell you what the Bible does or doesn't say. So today is the introduction to our seven. How does the passage prompt me to pray, and this is very important. Prayer is one of our strongest weapons. Um, C.S. Lewis once said, somebody criticized him about his prayers and said, do you really think your prayers changes God's mind? And C.S. Lewis says, I do not pray to change God. I pray to change me. And we see the power of prayer and how it works in our lives, but there's so much about prayer that we don't know and we don't understand, but it's just an act of faith, believing that God uses prayers to do things. So we pray in faith, even though we don't completely understand it. Now, here's a nice little illustration. Some things demand a response. Say that you get the same text from four different people call me, I need to tell you something. Which one of these texts will you respond to? Which one will you respond to first or the, or the quickest? We got the first one, unknown caller, um, call me, I need to tell you something. Um, you get a little alert on your phone, possible spam. Um, do you return that text? Do you ignore that text? Second one is from mama, call me, I need to tell you something. Do you return that text? How quickly do you return that text? Next one is from good old Dexter. You know Dexter. He's the dude that always wants a favor. Um, call me. I want to tell you something. I need to tell you something. 
he probably lost his homework, he wants to copy yours, or maybe he needs a ride somewhere, or maybe um, he doesn't have whatever. And you know that he's probably going to be asking a favor of you. Do you even text back? How quickly do you text back? And then the last one we got Miss Powers. She's a wonderful teacher. Everybody loves her, but she's trying to start um, a business and she wants you to use your influence over all of your friends to help her sell fanny packs. So she sends you a text and says, Call me. I need to tell you something. And you know, and you're pretty sure that she wants to ask you again, hey, please sell these fanny packs for me. They're really neat. They come in all kinds of colors and your friends need to have them help me sell these fanny packs. Do you return that text? If you do, how quickly? So here's my point with all of this. Some messages are different than others. And the question I want us to ask ourselves is what What is it about a message that makes us respond? And even more than that, what is it about a message that makes us respond quickly? I want us to look at another message that we've received. The Bible, the Word of God. Uh, a lot of times we just read the Bible, close it, and walk away. That's like getting a text on your phone. You look at it, you read it. You, what's the term? You ghost it? Is that right? Um, I know I'm messing that term up, but I saw it on Spider-Man, so I kind of know what he means. So you just turn the phone off and you don't reply. You just read it and you move on. So what would make us reply to the Word of God? Um, one question we may ask, do, do we know him? That previous um, screen we discussed it, maybe we wouldn't return a text because it was from an unknown caller, and because we didn't know the person, we wouldn't return it. And when we read the Bible, when we study scripture, do we reply to the message because we know God? Do we love him? We saw the text from our mom. You know, we love her, and we see a text like that, and we think, oh, it might be important, um, or even if it is important, it might be important to her, even if it's something that, that I'm not really excited about, but because I love her, I want to make sure that I respond quickly as I can and, and see what's, what's going on. Do you respond to the Word of God because you love Him? Do you know Him? Do you love Him? And the last one, do you value Him? Um, sometimes you get um, texts from friends or even adults, and even though you know them and even though you love them, you don't necessarily value what you believe they want to talk about. Um, you don't get really excited about getting into the business of fanny packs, or you don't get really excited about a guy who all the time is asking you for a favor. And you really don't value that conversation, even though you know that person, even though you may love that person, you just don't value what's going to be said so you don't respond so we bring it back to the word of god and if you know him and if you love him then the last question do you value what he's saying and this is legitimate because sometimes we avoid a conversation with god because we do not want to hear what he's going to say to us and we do not want to be open or acknowledge what he's calling us to do so this is a really important question because if we have faith in God, then we value his call on our life. If we have faith in God, then we believe what he wants to tell us is more important than anything that's going on here on earth. So we read the scriptures and we respond. And I haven't brought this up yet, but the way we respond is in prayer. So we get a message from God. And then we respond by sending a message back. We receive a message from God in Scripture, and we send a message back by prayer. 
And specifically, what we're going to be studying as far as an hour of seven is the value of praying the specific scripture that we've been reading. Because the whole thing with um, the seven hours is what does the scriptures prompt us to do? And how does the scriptures prompt us to pray? So we want to talk about the value of praying specific scriptures. There's seven benefits that is listed in this chapter, and we will eventually talk about all seven of them. Today, we're only going to cover a handful of them, but the first one is we pray scripture for conviction. And when I say conviction, I'm talking about um, having a strong belief and an urgency to do God's will. We pray the scriptures for consistency. Um, praying the scripture will help us be in prayer more often and more consistently. Um, we pray the scripture for confidence um, because we know that the scripture is the word of God. So if we're praying that, we know that we're praying something good. We're praying the scripture for specificity. Um, did I even say that right? Specificity. Um, that may be one of the questions, how to say this on the Zoom Kahoot um, trivia challenge. How do you say specificity? But anyway, it helps us zoom in on what God wants us to focus on. Diversity. Um, sometimes we pray about the same thing over and over again, um, but scripture helps us see um, a broader picture of the things that God wants us to pay attention to. Reinforcement. Sometimes reading the scripture um, goes in one ear and out the other, but when we pray it, it goes deeper into the heart. And simplicity. Um, sometimes when we pray, it gets all um, crowded and jumbled up and just just add a bunch of stuff that doesn't even need to be in there. Praying the scripture helps us to be simple and many times simple is better. So let's begin to look at these. We'll look at a couple of them before we wrap up. The first one we want to look at is conviction dot desire for an awareness of God's will. Um, conviction often pulls us away from doing the wrong thing, but conviction also pushes us towards doing um, the correct thing. Praying in response, um, praying in response to life can distract us from God's will. If we're only praying by what we see, then we're praying about things that maybe Satan is using to distract us from something more important. Um, we're praying about friendships. We're praying about an injury. We're praying about a problem. We're pray and it's not wrong to pray about these things, but if that's all we're praying about, it could be distracting us away from what God wants us to pay attention to. But if we pray scripture, it helps keep us in tune to how God wants us to pray. All these things may be going on in our life, but then when we look at the scripture, we're starting to pray about that. It reminds us and it confirms in us and it gives us a conviction that even in the storm, God has a calling in our life. By praying scripture, it helps us to respond better to life. A lot of times we want to respond in fear. We want to respond in worry. We want to respond in selfishness. But when we're praying scripture, it reminds us of the qualities that God wants us to have when dealing with difficulties in life. It is surprising how relevant scripture can be when you pray it in the light of life. Even this week, um, a friend of mine was being called to a ministry opportunity. The day came for that ministry opportunity. And when she opened up her daily devotion, the devotion was on the exact same thing that her ministry opportunity dealt with. And this is not just something that's only happened once or twice in my life. This is something that I hear people talking about constantly. People who are praying with scripture and people that are, are looking for God's will in their life, when they are in the scripture, when they are praying the scripture, they see God sending them very specific scripture 
for very specific days. And it's really awesome how we see God move in those situations. Praying scripture can also reveal areas of life you need to correct or let go of rather than trying to save it or hold on to it. Sometimes we're praying to keep something that God wants us to let go. And if you're praying scripture, scripture can shine light on certain situations and help you to pray about those things correctly and help you to view those things correctly. But if we're only praying according to emotional responses to what's happening around us, then we could get it wrong. We could be praying in a completely different direction than God wants us to go. So praying scripture helps us have the correct conviction. Consistency is when you pray as needed. Um, there, there are certain medicines that you take and you read the bottle and it says take as needed. And a lot of people say, hey, I'll just pray as needed. But I think one problem is we forget how much we need prayer. And when we pray the scripture, it reminds us that we need to pray constantly. It reminds us, it says prayer is like breathing. How long can you go without breathing? Um, some people can go a little bit longer than others, but there is definitely a limit to how long you can go without breathing. That is the illustration that the Bible teaches us in regards to prayer. How long can you go without praying? We have a command in scripture that says, pray without stopping. Um, when we pray scripture, we're constantly reminded how important it is. And when we put prayer and scripture together, then we're putting two things together that was meant to be. I mean, it goes together better than peanut butter and jelly. It goes to better, it goes together better than, than like Chick-fil-A and, and waffle fries. I mean, it, it's supposed to be together. And when you put it together, then you see it work better than before because it cooperates together. And when you put prayer and scripture together, it builds healthy spiritual momentum. It makes you stronger. It makes you more focused. It makes you more equipped. It makes you better prepared to respond to things in a correct way rather than a negative way. And you begin to see some of the power behind scripture and prayer when you put them together. There's something out there called Mighty Putty, and it's a type of epoxy. And when you separate them, um, it comes with two different putties. And when you separate them, they're unimpressive. They, they don't do anything. But when you put those two putties together and you mix it together, then you have a powerful bonding agent that if you keep it on your fingers for too long, you're going to be in trouble. But you can use it for good stuff. And a lot of times we see scripture and prayer. Um, take on that type of reaction. When you put scripture and prayer together, then it's some powerful stuff and it can accomplish some great things. Confidence. Knowing you are on the right track. How many times have I had somebody express to me, Jamie, I just don't know how to pray about this. And sometimes we don't know how to pray about something because, you know, a lot of times, I've heard people pray, God, just whatever your will is. I don't know whether to ask you to help me with this or not help me with this. I don't know whether to ask you to give me this or to take it away. I don't know what to ask. And we don't have that confidence in prayer. Now, there is a scripture that says that, that even when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. But when we are praying scripture, we know that we have something that is always reliable to give us guidance in praying correctly. Scripture will always point to God's will. So when we don't know God's will and we're just in the Bible and we begin to pray the Bible, it's amazing how relevant and how specific and how beneficial praying those scriptures can be. Now, let's put those three things together and look at an example. Um, you hear bad news. You're worried about what might happen next, and you begin to pray, God, please help me. 
you begin to pray that God will change things. God, please make things easier. Please um, help things to go in a way that makes my life comfortable or makes my life better. You begin to pray, um, God, please don't let them have their way because it will hurt me. Please don't let them have their way because it's not what I want. But wait a second, are you praying for God's will or against God's will? Because maybe God's up to something that you don't even know about, and maybe God is going to use this difficulty to do something in your life or give you an opportunity to bless somebody else's life. So because you don't know how to pray, you begin to pray Scripture. Because you've read the seven arrows and you went through chapter seven and you're like, oh, I know what I'll do. I will pray scripture. And the scripture you just happen to be on is Matthew 6, 25. And when you read Matthew 6, 25, it says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is it is not life more than food? and the body more than clothes. So the three things we talked about this morning, conviction, consistency, and confidence, began to take place when you pray this scripture. Maybe your prayer sounds something like this. God, because of Matthew 6, 25, I've learned I can trust you. Lord, help me to focus on the most important stuff. Because the end of the verse is it's not life more than what I'm worried about. It's not the body more than what I'm concerned about. God, help me to know that there's more important stuff going on than whatever it is I'm worried about. So you got that conviction. Then you got this consistency. God, thank you for speaking to me through this verse. Please teach me more tomorrow as I continue to read your word. So if God is speaking to you today, then there's an eagerness to hear from God tomorrow. So you can hear God more specifically speaking to you when you not only read the scripture, but you pray it back to him. Um, and it gives you a consistency and it gives you a purpose and it keeps you a desire to keep praying on a regular basis. And then lastly, confidence. Um, God, you tell me not to worry. I know that you are in control. I know that this challenge will prepare me for how you want me to serve you in the future. So this verse gives you confidence. This verse gives you directions. And when you pray, you know that you are praying the will of God because it's based on this verse. And that's just an example on how praying scripture can strengthen your prayer life and not only strengthen your prayer life, but make it more effective in preparing you to live life to follow. So, Arrow seven, we have arrived at the final arrow. We have introduced it, and next Sunday, we will be digging in a little bit deeper to arrow seven and what it teaches us. Again, thank you for being here for Sunday School. Um, please share this um, with other families, and thank you again for your love, for your support, for your encouragement. And I look forward to the next time I get to see you in person. So until then, have a great day. We love you. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.